Ladies and gentlemen, we will be starting at 8.30. Uh, Brockton Firefighters Pipes and Drums will begin at that time. Truly thank all of you for being here today on a Saturday. And again, this day uh, is a day that uh, was much like the day we had 20 years ago, almost verbatim. So thank you for being here. Brockton City Hall, uh, the People's Building right here, and a Remembrance Day, a solemn day to remember 20 years ago, 9-11-2001. I'm Robert Sullivan. I'm the City of Brockton's Mayor, joined here today by esteemed elected officials. I also want to recognize uh, Brian Nardelli, Brockton Fire Chief, Chief Manny Gomes from Brockton Police, State Senator Michael Brady, State Representative du Dubois, Michelle Dubois. I know Bridget Pluff is here on behalf of State Rep. Jerry Cassidy. I know that our State Representative Claire Cronin uh, is in Easton at the same time, uh, but we thank Claire for what she does. Council at Large President Winthrop Farwell is here. Council at Large Tina Cardozo is here. Ward 4 Councilor Susan Nicastro is here. Ward 5 City Councilor Jeff Thompson is here. Ward 7 City Councilor Joyce. Uh, Shirley Azak is here. Councillor Jack Lally is here. Tim Sullivan, who is the Ward 7 School Committee member, is here as well. And Tony Branch, Bishop Tony Branch, who is one of the Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical High School representatives from the city of Brockton. More importantly, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. I want to thank the Brockton Police Department Honor Guard the Brockton Fire Department, Pipes and Drums and Honor God, and all of the brave men and women that serve our city every single day. For law enforcement, first responders, the brave, brave men and women that we here have here in this city and throughout our Commonwealth and throughout our country, 
I also want to thank every person that has ever served or currently serve the armed services here in the United States of America. At this time, I'm going to ask that um, the national anthem be played to begin the ceremony. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the? I would also At this time I would like to also uh, thank Councilor at Large Moses Rodriguez for being here. Councilor, thank you. Uh, at this time I would ask that the Brockton Police Department Chaplain, uh, Reverend Beals, please come to the podium for the opening prayer. Let's pray. Our gracious God in heaven, we are thankful for the beautiful day that you have once again given to us. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness seen in so many ways. We thank you for the protection that you have given to us over many, many years. And Lord, as we look back these 20 years and recognize a day that goes down in infamy, I ask that you would help us to have thoughts that would direct our minds and our attention toward that which is good and that which is right. We thank you, God, for the men and women that have given of themselves to give us freedom, the men and women on that specific day that sacrificed their own lives in order to save so many others. We thank you for those that were first responders that did give the ultimate sacrifice. I thank you also for the current day first responders, men and women who are dedicated to taking care of, to protecting, to enforcing the law, and to ensure that our country, our states, and our city here continues to run well and as safely as possible. I pray, God, that you would bless each one that you would give to them your continued protection. I pray that you would bless our city government, our state government, and our federal government. Help them to be able to look to you, to follow your lead, to do what is right, and to see our freedom continue as it has been. I pray, Lord, that our minds and hearts would be directed first and foremost to you, knowing that you are in charge of all things. So help us throughout this day, Lord. Help us throughout our lives. And I ask that you would give to us your blessing. I ask it all in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Beals. I also want to acknowledge um, retired Fire Chief Ken Galligan for being here, retired Fire Chief Mike Williams for being here as well. I want to thank you all um, 
could be seated if you choose, please. I want to thank you, as I said, for being here today. <clears throat> 20 years ago today, our day uh, started just like this. It's a beautiful day. I remember it well. And like most days, we woke up early. We got ready for either school or work. Uh, but before our morning could really begin, we were all in shock. And it changed. It changed rapidly. As we know, four planes have been hijacked and brought to various places within our, our fine nation. The two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center in New York City. and destroyed those buildings and the surrounding buildings around that area known as Ground Zero. Of course, another one crashed down at the Pentagon and the last one crashed in that field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The images that day were truly horrendous and the news that, that ran for weeks after that and the world uh, across our country and the world were at times very, very difficult to watch. Very, very difficult to watch. And I too, truly remember that day watching the brave firefighters and police and first responders and Port Authority and our military uh, running into buildings and trying to recover and try to save lives. That's what those folks, that's their passion, that's their fabric, that's what they do. They just go in and try to help and try to save. And all I could think about personally that day was, was Brockton and my own family. My brother Ryan was, was living in Manhattan that day and my, my brother-in-law, Mike Louise, was FBI down in Manhattan that day. and It's just a horrendous day for New York City. But the Pentagon and Shanksville and the nation as a whole, just a terrible, terrible day. But, you know, those, those evil, evil, evil people might have knocked us to our knees, but they didn't break us. Not at all. In essence, it made us stronger that day. And 20 years later, we continue to be strong. But I do know, because myself... November, two months later, I went down to Ground Zero. I went down to run the New York City Marathon. And I went down to Ground Zero, it was still smoking. And the first responders were still there with their dogs. They were breathing in that, that terrible smell, and I can still smell it to this day. But they did it because that's their passion. Their mission didn't just end that day, it went on for weeks, it went on for months. A lot of men and women here today went down to Ground Zero. That's what Brocktonians always do. We help people. We help people in our city of champions. We help people in our commonwealth. And we help people throughout this fine nation known as the United States of America. I want to just say right now that it's a great honor to stand before you today as the mayor to honor and remember. And we will never forget that day. Never. We will always remember those that passed that day and those that passed this day because of what they breathed in. That's just a fact, it's a cancer carcinogen. I also just wanna say, as a Brocktonian, not as mayor, I am so thankful for the men and women that serve our city every single day. The police, the fire, the first responders. <laughs> Many of us hope to never have to have a a fire truck pull up to your house or a police cruiser pull up to your house, but we're confident knowing that if we ever needed to dial 911, they'd be there in a heartbeat. And they'd be running in and they'd be helping, just like that day 20 years ago, running in and helping. I don't know if anybody watched any of the documentaries last night, but, but I did with my children. We have to continue to educate and inform the young. We have to learn from the past to forge for the future. I want to first of all thank my father, Robert Sullivan over there, Brockton High School history teacher, who has taught me so much in life. And every, every person here has learned from family members, moms and dads. But you know what? That's what makes our community so special. So today is a solemn day. It's a day of remembrance. But every single day we have to remember what happened on that day and what has happened every day since. We're a great country. We're a wonderful nation. We're the land of the home and the free, but we can only do it together. And I just want to say right now that we, as a community, as a commonwealth, as a nation, as the city of champions, will continue to always remember 9-11-2001. I wish you and your families health and safety. God bless the United States of America. God bless our commonwealth of Massachusetts. God bless our city of Brockton, Massachusetts. 
and God bless each and every one of you and the men and women that serve us each and every day in our military and our first responders of police and fire. I want to thank you very, very much. At this time, we are going to take a, a moment of silence to honor those lost on American Airlines Flight 11 that crashed into the North Tower on that day. May they rest in peace. Our thoughts and prayers are always with them. This time, it's my honor to ask Senator Mike Brady to the podium to share some words, followed by State Representative Michelle Dubois, followed by City Council President Winthrop Fowler. Thank you, Senator. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, as the mayor mentioned, this is a very solemn day for the city of Brockton, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the United States of America. For those of us who were there, we remember that day very, very vividly. It was an election day, and um, we were helping out some of the candidates, and all of a sudden, when the planes hit the towers, they, they called off the election. Then, thank God, our Secretary of State said the election should go on because we should never let another country determine our fate. Our forefathers fought for the freedom to have all the freedoms and rights we have, the right to free in elections, the right for freedom of speech, and many, many other freedoms that we have. We must never forget, and I want to thank all our veterans because to this day they're still fighting, even though some of them have brought them back. Thank you. And, and thank God they, they captured and took care of business with that terrorist bin Laden. So there was a promise made that they would get him, and our veterans got him. And today our veterans are still fighting day in and day out to protect our lives so we can gather freely like we do today. And I want to thank all the families that came out today and the children, because some of the children were not yet born that day. And I want to thank the families that brought the children, because we got to teach our children to remember and never forget our history. And as the mayor mentioned, our first responders, as people were running out of those buildings, our first responders were running in to save lives, and they put their lives on the line. We lost, we lost too many of our firefighters, police officers, and first responders, and I want to thank them. And let's give them a round of applause today. Because as the mayor mentioned, they are saving lives day in and day out. I remember my father, he died in 2001 before September 11th, and, and, and they were always there to take care of him after he had a couple strokes. So we must never forget, because every day they're out serving our city, our Commonwealth, to protect lives day in and day out. And I want to thank everybody here who showed up today. We must never forget, and we must honor all our first responders, our veterans. And I want to thank all of you for showing up today, because Again, as I mentioned, we must work together. A house divided will not stand. And after September 11th, our country came together. And I, as, as the mayor mentioned, I was watching things on GBH this week, and our Congress and senators stood together singing, God bless America, outside of the Capitol. And today, it's not always holding it true. Our country is divided today. And we must come together, like all of the officials and all the people in this audience and all the people in the city of Brockton, we are the city of champions because we work together, and we must all to come together, stand together, to work together. That's the only way we move the city forward, we move the Commonwealth forward, and we move the United States of America forward. So God bless you all for being here. God bless the city of Brockton. God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Brady. I, I also want to uh, thank and, and, and welcome, and I, I, I apologize, I didn't see it on the list. Of course, our, our esteemed Counselor Lodge, Rita Mendez, thank you for being here, Counselor. Uh, State Rep. Michelle Dubois, please. Hello, everyone. And it is always um, uh, amazing to me um, to be able to speak at events like this. And I experienced September 11th so humbly as so many, and I bet everybody here did. And um, having this, this title as a state representative and the opportunity to be here at this podium um, to express how difficult that was. Um, but to tell you, um, some 20 years ago, 
Uh, I was a 28 year old person working at Pine Street Inn. Uh, I did clothing donations. Um, I have a long history working with homeless people and Pine Street Inn had a warehouse in Jamaica Plain. So I was there bright and early and all of a sudden I heard this commotion, commotion because our program was operated by homeless people. And um, it wasn't until that day that I found out that most of the people that worked there were also veterans and they were watching the terrorist attack on a television in the back room. And I was, you know, pretty naive at 28 years old, even growing up in Brockton, um, and didn't really understand all the foreign policy that was involved. But I will tell you, from the moment the plane hit the towers, the gentlemen in that room knew 100% that our nation was under attack. They knew it, they saw it, they lived it. And um, I can just imagine so many veterans and so many caring people that were firefighters and police officers on that day also knew. And so I just, from a humble perspective of that 28 year old and now the 48 year old that stands before you today, I wanna to thank you for your service, all the veterans, all our active military, our firefighters, you've saved my family on many occasions and our police department who saves our city on many occasions. I appreciate the time and the opportunity and I, I pray uh, today and every day for the victims of September 11th, thank you. Thank you, Representative. Council President Winthrop Falwell, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much from all of us on the Council for taking time out of your day to come here this morning. It is a sad day to remember 9-11, but I kind of have a different take on it. I'm inspired by what happened after 9-11. I'm inspired by the fact that this country bounced back, that we were not taken to our knees and we did not fail to get back up. I think we are smarter. I think we are more vigilant. I think we are more prepared to prevent another 9-11. So out of the ashes and out of the sorrow of 9-11 came a better country. And may we always remember that day. May we always strive to make this a better city and a better country. And finally, I want you to take a look at the men and women in uniform here. On any given day, they can be called upon to possibly sacrifice their life on our behalf. And I don't think we should ever take that for granted. I think we should remember how proud we are of the men and women in our armed forces and our public safety services, including our EMS services here in the city. Without them, we would not be a community, and most importantly, without all of you, we would not be a community. So again, from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of all of the members of the City Council, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you, Mr. President. At this time, I would ask Police Chief Manny Gomes to the podium, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, being here today on this uh, solemn occasion. We're here today to honor those 2,977 souls that were claimed by brutal attacks on September 11th. Men and women woke that day never anticipating how their lives would end on the, the attacks of that day. We remember and respect all those that went tragically to their death in New York City, Washington, D.C., and in a somber field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. First responders on that day responded with speed, courage, and compassion. Heroism was boundless on that day. Thousands of first responders rushed to the scenes and saved tens of thousands of lives. More than 400 of those first responders did not make it out alive. So today, we should always remember those souls. And we will remember all that lost 
all the souls that lost their lives that day. We will remember every first responder who died in honor. We must also always remember every family that lives with the grief of that day. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Gomes. Now I would like Brian Nardelli, Brockton Fire Chief, to the podium, please. Thank you, Chief. Good morning, everyone. This reminds me of the morning that tragic Tuesday 20 years ago, the weather, the beauty of the fall. Before I begin, again, like the mayor did, I'd like to recognize retired Chief Kenneth Galligan, retired Chief Michael Williams for being here today. I'd also like to recognize standing with us today, Lieutenant M Michael Bishop of the FDNY retired. Lieutenant Bishop responded that day to the towers and he did what firefighters do. He was a retired member at the time. He lives here with us in the city of champions, but he did that day what firefighters do. So thank you for being with us. As we think back, I think as this day approaches for all firefighters and any first responders, police officers, EMS providers, I think we think of how the world has changed. And I know as myself, I get wrapped into those National Geographic specials and the History Channel and this fog of what that meant at the time. I look back 20 years, my 21-year-old daughter was one year old and my, my wife has a picture of her in front of those blazing towers. It brings you back, especially as a firefighter, to your thoughts and your prayers and knowing those families that lost loved ones, not just the first responders, but all those civilians in that tower. Where were we? Where have we been? Where are we going? I think the fire service and the police departments, I think we could be upset and angered over the years as we've mourned for these people. 343 firefighters. Firefighters are still dying at an alarming rate in the city of New York from what they were exposed to at those towers, as well as the 71 police officers that passed. I think one of the things we speak of is never forget, and we say that all the time. I think another term should be we should always remember. There was great heroism and great sacrifice that went on that day. And if we're able to celebrate the lives of people like Chief Ray Downey, who was one of the chiefs that was killed at that attack. He, he was one of the founding members of the urban search and rescue teams that now travel outside of, and inside the country to re respond to different events like Hurricane Katrina and down to the earthquake in Haiti. The people that he trained were helping to try to get him out of that rubble pile that day. Father Michael Judge, who has Firefighters and police officers lay on the ground along with civilians. He said the Lord's Prayer over and was later killed in the attacks. The head of security, Rick Rascola, I'm sure a lot of you have read about him over the years. This is a man who probably saved 2,000 lives as he stood on, the, on the, one of the landings of the World Trade Center and urged people to get out of the building, sang him songs with his trademark bullhorn. We talk of people like Stephen Siller who got off that morning from the Squad, squad one, and was supposed to be playing golf with his brothers, and went on and went and ran through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel to get to those buildings, because he was doing what firefighters do. He was going to save lives. And we talk of people, the most senior firefighter, Joe Angelini, who died, along with his son in that building that day. Joe could have t retired 20 years prior, but he was there that day with his brothers in arms. We all talk of Todd Beamer, who in this cast and group that he put together on Flight 93, in his famous saying of let's roll, to take down that plane to save Washington, D.C. So today as we remember and we mourn, let's pray for their sacrifices and let's celebrate their lives. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Nardelli, for those, those words. At this time, 
uh, we're going to bring the, the wreath uh, to the, uh, the flag podium uh, that is at half, half mass. Two tails. Oh, tails. <laughs> At this time, I would ask that uh, recently retired uh, Brockton Fire Chief, uh, Fire Chaplain, uh, Reverend McCoy, please come to the podium. I've been trying to think of more than words of prayer on this 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks we remember today. I'll only say what comes to mind when faced with acts of terror. I've heard people speak of courage, which we again lift up today, it certainly was demonstrated and continues to be demonstrated by so many. Yesterday I heard someone speak of creativity, which is certainly to be preferred over destruction, especially the destruction of that terrible day, the effects of which continue to adversely affect the lives of so many. If I had to say what the opposite of terror might be, what overcomes it best, I would agree with those who say love. It's the truth of the gospel a love stronger than death. Not merely love that's a warm feeling or a shallow sentiment, rather a love that goes to radical extremes. A love that lays down its life, not solely for friends, but even for perfect strangers, even for enemies. I've seen homicide detectives shed tears, hearing survivors forgive their loved ones killers. We've seen first responders enter burning buildings, climb ladders engulfed in smoke with the hope of rescuing occupants. 20 years ago, 343 firefighters perished in the hope of save, saving the lives inside New York's Twin Towers, along with police officers, security personnel, and first responders who laid down their lives for countless others. That is the opposite of terror. That is the epitome of love, which, in the words of St. Paul, is the greatest of three, faith, hope, and love. Whatever your background, whatever your faith or lack of it, look for God. Look for God, if you will, life's ultimate purpose, if that's what it might be, in acts just such as these, in the sacrifices that real love requires. Look for God in the helpers, a wise man once said to traumatize children. We look together, we represent you and I, and embody that glad truth here today and every day of our lives. Let us pray. Merciful God, we are again reminded this day of the attack on our country 20 years ago. We remember the planes hitting the Twin Towers. We remember the smoke and the terror and the running and mayhem and the towers falling. We remember the plane hitting the Pentagon. We remember the plane that crashed in a field in Pennsylvania. We grieve for all those who lost their lives in these attacks. We sympathize with their loved ones who miss them still. And so we pray for their strength their courage and consolation, Lord. Have mercy upon them, we pray. We remember how shocked and vulnerable we all of us felt. 
We remember, Lord, how stunned we were to know such hatred and hostility. Have mercy upon us, we pray. We remember, too, the countless acts of heroism and selfless love that were done that day and in the days that followed. So we give you thanks. Lord, help us remember that only by your steadfast love can we live in safety and in peace, for you are truly our help and our redeemer. Be with us, we pray. Be with the personnel of our fire services, with those who serve in law enforcement, and with first responders everywhere. Be with the men and women of our armed forces and their families. Defend them, we pray, with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Grant them courage in the perils they face. An abiding sense, O oh Lord, of your nearness, wherever they may be. Grant, O oh Lord, to our community, to our country, and to our world, the peace which turns swords into plowshares, the peace of those who walk this earth in humility, the peace that embraces your world from the hard wood of the cross, the love that unites us in all times and places as one human family. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend. I do, uh, I do want to thank a few folks that spent hours and hours to coordinate today. First of all, I want to thank Anna Anise, who gifted us with a beautiful voice for the National Anthem, who's a... I want to thank my Chief of Staff, uh, Sidney Marrow. Uh, I want to thank Peter Reardon. I want to thank Bill Hill, who's President of 144. Jensen DeNoise in my office that worked, again, hours to collaborate on this. And of course, it's a weekend, so we want to thank the building department and Brian Matta for setting up today. And out of the mayor's office, I want to thank Marcy and Kim and, and Davison and John and Joe that are here as well today. But more importantly, I want to thank everybody for taking time to remember, to reflect, to honor, to respect. Uh, and I just want to thank you all. And as we leave here today, as the ceremony and remembrance uh, concludes, we will never forget, uh, and we will continue to honor all of the brave men and women that serve every single day our nation. At this time, we're going to conclude with the firefighters' pipes and drums.
Thank you again. Be well and God bless.